Hey, good morning. Hope everybody had a good Tuesday and Monday here. We're at hump day on Wednesday and beautiful day out here in Tennessee. A little chilly this morning, but it's supposed to warm up. So quick thing here, story time. We get SOS deals. You guys heard me talk about this time and time again. And uh, we probably get one to two. I say this all the time, about one to two a week, sometimes more. <coughs> Excuse me. Just getting over or trying to get over being uh, a little bit down and out being sick. So basically, um, this last SOS one that we're turning around, basically on the front end, and, and you guys heard me talk about it before, on the front end, you have to do your homework. You have to do the things that you have to do to figure out the income and make sure what you can use or can't use. So what the other lender did, they were using, um, they were using overtime to qualify this person uh, where they couldn't use the overtime because you didn't have like a two-year history of it. Okay, so... Let me back up a second. Overtime income, you have to have a track record of it, okay? Uh, most of the time, very very few exceptions, but most of the time you can get, you know, you have to have a two-year history of it. And what they do is take the average of that two-year history. Now, in the previous year, let's say 2021, let's say your overtime income has really dropped, then they more than likely are going to go by that one year because it's dropping. If it's increased or stay the same, they're going to take the average over 24 months. Well, this client didn't have the overtime income um, as far as the history to use it, but the previous lender was counting that income for them. And then when it got uh, you know down, down the road a little bit, what happened is um, the, the other lender was blaming the um, a student loan popping up uh, on their credit report. And that's not the case. What they did is they miscalculated the uh, overtime income number one to see if they could use it number two they were counting a lesser payment um, because they were going conventional as opposed to fha so those two things that should have been done on the front end were not done thus why we got the loan so we're working the loan we're going to get done in just just over two weeks i believe it is uh, on this but we had to switch it to fha which should have been the case all the way through so and now on top of that the sellers of this house has been burned a couple of times by FHA offers and so forth. So we're communicating uh, with the with them and the listing side and keeping them up to date every step of the way on this loan because we know how gun shy that, that they are. But, you know, going back to it, this is why it's so important to do your homework on the front end. If you don't do your homework on the front end and, and do a legitimate uh, pre-approval, or go a step further like we do is a pre-underwrite the file on the front end and uh, basically, you know, um, get get everything out of the way um, up front, then, then that's when we can, um, you know, be solid, and, you know, as far as giving a pre-approval letter out, giving our certificate out, meaning that it's been through underwriting and so forth. And most people don't do that. So just be aware of that if you're looking to buy or purchase or anything else. You've got to get all the details out of the way on the front end. The lenders should be. If not, then this is going to come up, especially in this market, because it's so hard to get contracts in. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions on that. Comment down below. Shoot me a private message or text me at 423-262-9229. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.